but they do form little, or they can form some chains and they can form aggregates that damage the membrane and they can actually have similar uh, types of red cell problems that lead to all this inflammation and vascular damage. So SC and S thalassemia, you tend to have a little bit less sickling, but you can still have pretty severe anemia. And, um, wow. Yeah, so you, all these things kind of mash together, but the, the basic thing is when they form these long chains, the membrane gets damaged, and now you have these abnormal cells floating around. The red cells normally are very slick and smooth. They just slide right through the blood vessels, mm -hmm. drop off their oxygen, come back, you know, pick up some carbon dioxide, and come back and just cycle through your exactly. body like yeah. that. But once you have the damage to the membranes from the sickling and unsickling process, these cells now get down to the small circulation to drop off the oxygen. What they're doing is uh, they're actually getting blocked or they're sticking to blood vessels or they're stimulating white cells and play this and they cause blood vessels to become obstructed and blocked so you, you don't get oxygen to your tissues you get this severe pain and the pain in the bones uh, tends to be the most characteristic because that's an area that demands a lot of oxygen and if you don't get enough oxygen it hurts like hell you know you, know, you guys you, you guys could describe that yes it's mm -hmm. terrible terrible yes. bone pain yeah it sucks yeah, it <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. So, yeah there's nothing I could tell you you guys know your pain and it's much worse than anything your doctors and nurses have ever experienced. So they just gave the medical. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, so the, uh, but you know, you feel the pain in your bones, but what you don't feel is some of the decreased blood flow through your lungs, or some of the small vessel injury to your brain or and to your yeah. heart and and kidneys. So, Can we talk about that? I wanted yeah. to talk about that as you're <laughs> talking about the organs. You know, what does it do? to some of those things since you well, were already touching on it. Okay, so you might get some pain if you get a really bad problem in your kidneys, but generally you don't feel mm -hmm. the small circulatory damage you get in your kidneys. You feel mm -hmm. it in your bones because there's like, more inflammation in the bones, mm -hmm. but you can get kidney problems where it just leads to some progressive kidney problems. Mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the brain, you can have large strokes, like uh, kids often have large strokes, mm -hmm. but as you get older, you can have, you can have tiny little um, injuries to the blood vessels that can be progressive over time. So we, we, protecting the brain is very important in, in sickle cell therapy. The focus is it's very important to try to uh, protect the brain. There's a, uh, an expert from Vanderbilt named Michael Devon uh, who has made his career in, in working on trying to do you know, training of, studies to try to help protect the brain. Transfusion therapy is, has been the best uh, treatment we have because it keeps normal cells percolating through the body, mm -hmm. but there's not um, a treatment for to try to protect that. Hydroxyurea is one thing that might, might improve it. And he's uh, answering oxygen. some of your questions, what are some of the best, uh, she asks, what are medicines do you prefer to help control um, yeah. helping crisis? Yeah, we don't have you know, right now we're developing, we're getting more drugs on board. Uh, the drug we've had for about 30 years is hydroxyurea, and there's a lot of reasons why that's helpful. It was developed because it increases fetal hemoglobin production, but over time we've learned that it also lowers the white cell count and platelet count. It raises the total hemoglobin and actually makes the cells less sticky. And uh, less sticky, like I was saying, the the problem with sickle cell is all this damage and inflammation and expression of new proteins on the cells. Well, the hydroxyurea decreases that to some extent. Keep going. Okay, so, the pages. All right, so hydroxyurea is, it does more than just increase fetal hemoglobin, but that's, that right now has been the medicine we've used for many years. There's other s drugs that are being developed that might stimulate fetal hemoglobin by a different mechanism that might be easier to take. Uh, we don't know. 